All right, so here we go. We got this nice bucket right here. Drop that down. Nice and yummy. What's kind of crazy is they eat a lot of leaves. We're gonna just chuck this out of the back. Hopefully we don't hit a bird. No, I'm kidding. We're not gonna hit a bird. Ready? One, two, and three. But this tree. Thanks. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at the ranch. Today, guys, we got another thing to do. We got things to get done. And we're gonna show you the whole process of what we're gonna get done today. And that is spicing up the parrot enclosures, giving them new enrichment. So as you guys know, we have our parrots right here. We're about to feed them, give them some new water and stuff. But if you look inside the cassowary enclosure, we have this sea grape tree. It's starting to spike up, look like freaking alfalfa over there. We don't want the branches to get too big. Why? Because if they get heavy, they get strong. And when they get to a big size, they can start crashing into this cage and we don't want any big trees around this cage because we don't want an accident to happen for you know this to get bent up and it looks like crap and or a cassowary somehow gets out which obviously we don't want that to happen whatsoever the reason why we made this giant enclosure and made it really really strong and i know yes we still have to expand it we haven't done absolutely anything yet but we've just been doing a ton of other stuff trying to get things done let's get inside of there give them a bunch of fruit veggies pellet so they'll be busy while we cut these branches and use those branches for the parrots let's make it happen all right so here we go we got this nice bucket right here drop that down nice and yummy it's kind of crazy is they eat a lot of leaves this is some of their uh poo right here i've been saying poo it's kind of funny when i say it but they do a lot of browsing on leaves if you guys think about it in the jungle if it's the time of the year that there's no fruit or veggies or anything for the meat they're just picking leaves out eating grasses and all that stuff that's why we have it nice and thick i was talking to a guy the other day and he's from australia and he was telling me that I need to kind of switch the diet a tad and give them a little more vegetables and a little bit less fruit because sometimes the fruit has a little bit too much sugar, which it makes sense. So we're going to definitely start adding a little bit more vegetables and things of that sort. And he's like, you see how you can see the sun? They personally don't like that. The thicker, the better. These guys live deep, deep, deep in the jungle. So you want it to be as thick as possible. So we're probably going to add some thin-ish palm trees is what I'm thinking that go up. And you know, those would be palm fronds in different spots and just make it like a freaking complete jungle. That's what they like the most. And that's the same thing we're gonna have to do for the other side. But enough talking about the cassowaries because we gotta get the parrots down. Xander, be careful. It is muddy and it is slippery. This is a danger zone for cassowaries. Oh yeah, it's slippery. You feel it? Yeah. It is super slippery. Throw that over. And then this side over here is like really thick with greens and it's, it's very um, grassy. Some of the weeds in here I don't like. I'm gonna have to cut some of those out. But the other grasses I like a lot. As you can see, they use that area a lot more often over here. So that's the reason why there's grass. But I like that there's grass. I will never take the weeds down in here. There's no point. They like it all. Oh moly. I think they're jumping up. Look how high they're jumping. They're jumping up and eating the freaking, look at this. They're jumping up and eating the sea grapes. Interesting. I guess they like those weeds. The it's most like, maybe you can tell it's like flat yeah it's like if you ever been in a cattle pasture everything is like eaten at a certain height so right here guava sea grape they like cherry bushes they don't over here they like a little bit you can see the simpson stopters the native tree of florida they like it but the mulberries they don't like that much kind of weird you would think they would because that's uh, a plant that the tortoises like a lot but we got this little tool right here cut it simple and easy so then i guess stand back a tad and I'm going to just start cutting a little bit down and getting it going. That's one right there. And we're just going to chop down a little bit for these parrots. This is good enrichment for them. They absolutely love this stuff. And, oh, we lost the sandal. My boot came off. My boot came off. All right, just stay right there. I don't want to get hit in the head. And this is the best way to control this tree. It doesn't get too tall. And on top of that, we can just cut it. But in about one year, when we try to, you know, come in here and do this again, we won't be doing it with the cassowaries. That's the reason why we have that slide door over there. And we'll have that area obviously completed done. So these guys will be on that side while we're doing maintaining so we don't get, you know, beat up. And if you look at the guava trees on the bottom, they freaking hit the tree hard. I mean, it looks like a deer was just rooting that whole thing up. I think they just kick the trees all the time to get these fruit to drop down. You can see all the guavas up on the top over there. There you go. And it just rained a little bit, so that's why it's all muddy. But these are jungle toiling creatures, and they absolutely love the rain. So I don't want them to step on all that. I'm gonna chuck this over so it's nice and clean leaves for these parrots. And give it some. But it is sticky mud right now. It's very sticky mud. I'm gonna do a few more branches. I like to put like three, four branches each enclosure. They, it's just enrichment, natural enrichment. At the end of the day, parrot toys. 
are great, but in the wild, they're not playing with pair of toys. They're playing with sticks, leaves, coconuts, little things of, that they can find that's out of nature. They're not really finding a yarn and all that stuff unless they're like in a city parrot. But wild parrots, they don't have that kind of stuff. All right, what other branches we got? We got this one right here. But this tree, thanks. This tree was actually really freaking big at one point and we cut it back a lot before we made this cast wrinkle for that reason. There's all the guavas that were on this tree, you saw that? A ton of guavas on this tree. This guava tree looks amazing. And the same thing, I mean, even though this is level to the castaways and they just walk right into it, they have to walk around it. Again, more natural, the better. Big branches, you don't really want to cut back too much. Just keep it off. The fence line is all I'm trying to do. All right, a couple more branches. Oh, how are we going to get it? Okay. All right, they're coming in to investigate. Look at them, they're investigating behind us. Very curious animals, very smart animals. They're always watching. All right. Two more branches, and we're going to throw them inside the parrot cages. Ah. Freaking leaf in your face. I'm going to leave some of these lower ones because obviously we can see that they are munching those down. Yeah, and also, this guy was telling me, and he's probably watching the videos, but he was saying that also too much sugar, that's the reason why they're crazy. Supposedly in Australia... Yes, they are scary birds, but in Australia, is what he was saying, he lives there. They're not that really wild. As long as it's not breeding season, they don't have babies. You can walk right by them as long as you don't mess with them. It, and again, if you're not feeding them, the wild ones just do your, they just do the thing, mind their own business and that's it. But he says they're calm because they don't have that much sugar. The sugar is what's, you know, it's just like giving sugar to a kid to go crazy or to Cassandra. But other than that, let me, uh, let's get out of here. Let's start cutting up. So we're starting to realize who is who. Female, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm lying, can't tell yet. But one thing I can tell you is this one to the left, her dagger nail or his dagger nail is white compared to all the other ones. It's, it's just pretty freaking cool. And normally they're black, but that inside one is white. Really cool. All right, let's head out. Can you not come this way? We'll give her a second, or him. Or her. All right, perfect. All right, so we got all these branches. Let's get these bad boys, bring them all over here, and then start opening the doors and throwing them all in. Again, a natural enrichment is always the best. Just keep them busy so they're not just bored. Obviously, you can see they chew up all the sticks. They break them all down. I have those PVC pipes in there just to hold the cages apart. And then on top of that, there's always some sticks in there, even though I know people don't like that way. I personally don't like it either, but that's why I have all the sticks that I throw in there too. So we added the Quakers over here as well. We got them out of the patio. The door is on the inside. I really don't want to go through that way. And we're going to go through where the, where the food would go through and push it through. They're just getting a little bit of branches. They already have enough wood branches, but I'm just giving them some leaves and sticks too. Yeah, that probably wasn't the best idea either because there's some sharp metal there. All right, but that one's done. You guys are loud. The guineas, the parrots, everybody is so loud. Nice big one right there. We got for our double yellow heads. Probably my favorite out of all of them, to be honest. Got a nice that male is. Beautiful that male head. All right, we're gonna just chuck this out of the back. Hopefully we don't hit a bird. No, I'm kidding, we're not gonna hit a bird. Ready, one, two, and three. Perfect. Throw another one in there. But yeah, we like to add them in here. Try to do it at least once every two weeks, once every three weeks. It's I try my best to do it in there as best as often as I can, obviously. Now, blue fronts. These are actually the blue fronts that we brought to our speed house. All right, little girls. Get ready to close that door just in case. We got some food here. Let's keep that to the side. We'll feed them off after. And so the biggest reason why we're not producing it is because I think it's the goats. We're gonna have to figure out where on the property we're gonna move them to. Wow, that girl just took off line. We got one branch left, right? We'll get that to the W all the heads. Two branches, two branches, two branches. One more for in here. And I like to uh, mix it too. 
If it's not just seed grapes, I like to put guava branches and I also like putting oak branches. A three type of safe plant to throw inside your parrot enclosure if you have parrots or you have those plants around. And it's cheaper. Why? You're trimming and you're using and you're giving. Pretty awesome. All right, let's clean up, set everything up, and we'll watch them eat real quick. You see, when they're eating, they, they calm down a lot, they quiet down, but then when we start talking, they start speaking up a lot. So I give them this safflower diet, safflower gold, and then I also give them a little bit of vegetables here and there, not too much. Uh, fruits, very little, because it's so much high in sugar, but pretty much just this, and then some pellet as well, peri pellet. So everybody has their own ideas and ways of feeding the parrots. Some people like, you know, there's so many different ways to feed parrots, but I've always liked this way and I've been okay with it. It's one of the easier ways to feed them. And I'm still up in the air, you guys. I don't know, maybe once we finish that other big thing here, finish this, I finish reading, finish, finish. There's always, they're never gonna finish. I was thinking maybe we'll a big mix aviary enclosure for the Amazons, but I don't know. The only other way, other spot I'm thinking we might have to move these guys is gonna be towards the Solcadas where there's no animals whatsoever. It could be better. We'll see. No idea. I'm talking out of my behind right now. We'll figure it out. It'll all come together little by little as you guys see how the ranch revolves every day and all that cool stuff. He wouldn't let us uh, film with him right there, but you can see the W are one of my favorites. So I absolutely love it. How gorgeous that yellow there. I'd love to go to the wild and see these guys. I think the only ones we've seen in the wild, I think the yellow name. And well, we saw like um, Colombian, some type of parrots over there too. But there's so many different types of Amazon, the different types of stuff out there. McCall's are cool. Brazil, we gotta go to Brazil. Look at them, look at them. We saw McCall's. Yeah, I know, but McCall's Hyacinth. Look at it, look at the cassowaries. My God, look how freaking cool looking they look walking through the grass. Real quick though, you guys, if you live in Australia, drop it down in the comments. If you live by cassowary, we need to plant this area heavy, thick, very thick. We gotta take away the rest of that black, start putting our big uh, six by sixes in. We already have all the mesh. You just gotta dig our holes and really do it. Center, when are we doing this? I don't know. You're doing fire, you've been busy. Um, pretty much Cassandra's the only person that really helps me. She's not scared to get dirty. We go back and forth like freaking iron workers. And Waga! Poof, take the dirt out and get it out. We gotta do that. We really gotta do that. Maybe I'll start today. You guys think I should start it's today? Raining. Yeah, but it's not hot. That's the killer. That's sun on your back. Look at this. Look at this. Look at dude. Look at dude. Look at dude. He's playing with his horn with a freaking branch, bro. My God. It is what it is. Probably why they're not freaking breeding. You got horns in the bottom. They're like, yeah, this is not safe. I didn't think about it. The only reason why I like to keep the parrots here was because all the seed would drop down and the chickens and the goats and stuff could eat that seed that just left on the ground. So because you had somewhere else, then you're gonna have those rats and then the rats are gonna come. So it's a way to try to keep it as clean as possible because you have the chickens to clean it all up. Because rats are always the issue, mice are always the issue when you have food just sitting around. Chickens and goats, eats it up. Doesn't work for breeding, it sucks. You're gonna get a papaya that's gonna drop on your head soon. Look at this papaya tree. I can't see. It's freaking massive, bro. This thing. You cannot see that. It is humongous. It's been here for so long. This thing is so big, it'll freaking crash onto this side. We're gonna have to cut it too, not gonna lie. This thing is probably so heavy. It produces so much fruit though. I wish it was like two feet over into the freaking, oh, we have a papaya tree. I'm lying. There are two papaya trees in there. Pretty cool. All right, finish up. I'm gonna go show you one more thing. So we're still waiting for the mesh to come in. It is in route from the UK. Stay tuned. Once we get it here, we'll make a freaking video. The aviary is coming, you guys. It's gonna be really, really neat. What the heck? Oh, there's nothing. But if you can see, there is one big utility pole inside of there. I don't know why I placed it there. I mean, I might have to have a few in the middle for support. We have a really cool idea on how we're gonna build this one. Oh, there was somebody that came to me in Daytona that's building a really big, large aviary. Message me on Instagram if I don't have your contact. He's building something really cool. But anyways, we gotta cut those, those trees down probably around three feet lower than that 16 foot pole because this enclosure is gonna be 16 foot tall and uh, we don't want that tree to go in there, but we're gonna have a really, really cool thing in here uh, with all the birds. We're gonna keep the aviary two feet off the back of that fence line so that uh, we can do our perimeter checks just like we do for the cassowaries and we do for the otter. So we get pretty much from the otter enclosure, all we'll be able to walk behind the building all the way down to the aviary. 
we were able to walk behind the whole entire, all the enclosures to make sure all the maintenance is correct, make sure the back side of the enclosures are correct. And it's just a good way to keep off my neighbor's property. And on top of that, to protect the enclosures, you know, we have holes, all that whole freaking nine yards and everything, just to protect the enclosure is the main thing. And you know, because they have, you know, weed whackers and stuff, you don't want them to hit our mesh, they can hit the horse fence line and not the aviary fence line. But other than that, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here at the ranch. I know it's not too crazy. It hasn't been too crazy here at the ranch, but the projects are coming. We're going to hit this end of the year with a bang because we have a lot of movements. It's just the time of prepping, putting the money together, planning correctly, and doing it. It's pretty much a wrap. But if you guys want to see more tour videos, they are coming very soon. Stay tuned. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Put your post notifications on, you guys. And if you guys need any feeders, Blake's Exotic Feeders on Instagram, we have all quail sizes available at all times. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.